Hello, it's that time of year again. The race of the falling leaves. Lecco awaits as the final monument of the cycling season. Well, it's been a season beset by bad weather and today is no different. Certainly in Italy, the mist, the rain, the cloud, and all the mystique that surrounds this fantastic race is about to bring to an end another great season. 13 degrees at the arrival, 30 in a row that we finished in Lecco. Zao Rodriguez, and who else will add to the list of winners here? It's the 107th Giro di Lombardia, the Tour of Lombardy here live on Eurosport. Oh, good afternoon and welcome along. This is the scene at the arrival. Three and a half hours of race has gone. We started off from Bergamo for the second year running, all the way down to Valcavo. Cole Brianza, then the great Muro di Sormano. I can tell you the riders have been above that, but there is big news from out on the course already. 242 kilometers in total, nine shorter than last year, but that beast leg sapping climb of Sormano, the one that has really broken it up yet again. Villa Vergano, where we expect it to be decided, but the Madonna del Ghisallo, another famed climb in this part of the world, steeped in cycling legend, it promises to be an exciting afternoon. So the sign-in this afternoon went like this. Bergamo playing host to a farewell to the season for many and a farewell to careers for some as well. More about that in a minute. But the stars were off in mid-morning and the new world champion, Rui Costa, all in white, a decision that might upset the traditionalists. But there he was and he rolled off with the rest of his colleagues. And it was always gonna be a big break to get into. Attack straight away, but I can tell you the first of many breaks we've had so far didn't come along until around 60 kilometers in. A crash earlier on with 90 kilometers to go meant that Vincenzo Nibali, the big favorite for the race, was down. He was out. What an awful slice of luck for a man who just missed out on the podium again through bad luck last week after Italy had ridden a fantastic race at the roads. Nibali misses out, he's been in great form, but he hobbles off and his off-season ends in rather flat fashion. So Nibali off the hospital to get that checked out, just as many other riders have been. We'll go through a full rundown in a moment of those who did not start and did not finish. But as you can see, the mist and the clouds as Nicholas Roach, Nairo Quintana, Mick Rogers, Robert Hazink and the rest led them up. This was the Muro di Sormano. Record time was set just 12 months ago by uh, Purito Rodriguez, the eventual winner of the Giro di Lombardia last year. Ivan Basso there for Cannondale as well. As you can see, this legendary climb, 27% in places. It's an absolute hellish experience if you have to pedal up there. Nairo Quintana, most natural climber in the bunch, the winner of the King of the Mountains at the Tour de France, of course, podium place man in France this year. He set the tone for the climb and has since set the tone on the descent as well, alongside Alejandro Valverde. Valverde, third place at the World Championships last week. And the leaders of the race so far. Caruso, Santa Romita, Valverde, Gasparotto has joined them for Astana. And Nairo Quintana still out there as well. So, live onto the course at Giro di Lombardia, 60.9 kilometers to go. Brian Smith is alongside me, Rob Hatch, in the commentary box. And Brian, it's the end of the season. I have to admit to this being my favorite race of the season for my own special reasons. What does it mean to you? Well, history shows that this race is the season close, uh, you know, closes the season off, and the uh, the change with the World Championships going from August now to uh, to late September. This race has actually moved forward in the last uh, year or so, and uh, you know, it's a great race to finish the season off. But now the, the globalisation of uh, world cycling means that after this race, we've got uh, Beijing, and all of a sudden we're into uh, next year already uh, with uh, January with the Tour Down Under. This was the catch. Um, 
there was five riders in front. The five riders were Caruso from um, the team of uh, Perito Rodriguez, that's Katusha, uh, Santa Romita, BMC, the Italian champion, Gasparotto, Astana, Quintana and Valverde of Movistar. And it was that, that man that pulled so many faces uh, all season long, and that's Tommy Vokler of Europecar, caught them on the, on the just after the descent, now on the attack on his own. But uh, we have been over most of the major climbs of today, two climbs still to come, and that includes the Madonna del Gisalo, which is coming up very soon. Madonna del Gisalo is, of course, a great museum of cycling as well. It is one of the big historic climbs in this part of the region. We saw the Muro di Sormano, and that was really the first of cycling's great uh, expeditions into hellish climbs, if you like. Those big climbs like the Zoncolan in the other part of the country, just the other side of uh, the Dolomites, of course. And that started cycling's love affair, if you will, in rather sordid way, really, with those ridiculously steep climbs. You've seen it brought back 12 months ago. Hadn't been used since 1962 until uh, 2012. Rodriguez was the main man up it last year. Remember, Gilbert crashed on the way down at 12 months ago, as you reminded me, just before we came on air. That is more or less out the way now, but Gisalo to come, you say. And what about perhaps this uh, race again being decided on the new final climb, Villa Vergano? Well, that's over the last couple of years. That's where uh, Zolk and uh, Rodriguez uh, made their moves uh, to win the, the events in the, the consecutive years there. But uh, I tell you what, over the last eight years, there have been a lot of riders doubling up. Uh, Paolo Bettino, Cunigo, and uh, this could be the year of Rodriguez. He is in the group behind, and he stands a very good chance of winning back-to-back -back races. Welcome back, everybody. The race of the falling leaves, La Corsa delle Foglie Morte, 57.7 kilometers to go, and the sight of the brand new world champion Rui Costa of Movistar, racing with Alejandro Valverde today, and uh, there's a that nasty little angry reaction in Spain to a photo that was published on Twitter earlier on this week. I think it was yesterday. There was a coffee ride, and right at the top of uh, Gisalo, there's uh, a little cafe as well. And the guy just stopped for coffee there. Movistar guys riding together who last week were, let's say, supposed to be enemies at the World Championships. Didn't quite work out that way. And I know that Purito Rodriguez and Vincenzo Nibla, a couple of those involved, weren't happy with how the finale played out at the end of an epic race in Florence. And, of course, Rui Costa sitting next to Valverde's teammate, all smiles, all happy, like they would be on a training ride, as we see uh, Marcel Vis having a little slip off. He just attacked a moment ago. A man who said he's dreamed of winning this race. It is the race he grew up watching and dreaming of uh, as a cyclist. You can see the injury to his left thigh. The latest in a long line of men who have crashed today. We've seen, unfortunately, Jonathan Fumo of uh, I Am Cycling as well and uh, Facchini of Androni both being put into ambulances in the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Good news for Vis is that he's back on his bike, but that will surely knock his confidence, Brian. No, definitely. Um, you get far into a race like this and uh, you crash in one of the corners. Obviously trying to uh, to get to the front of this race, he was on the attack, so taking a few risks and sometimes we take these risks that, you know, comes back and bites you and it has done for, for Marcel Weiss. And Weiss has been showing some uh, good form over the last few weeks, uh, few weeks especially in the Tour of Britain. Uh, he was up there and uh, showing some, some good form, but unfortunately for him, he just went into that uh, corner a bit too fast, slid out. As we can see, the weather here for um, Lombardy is not the best. Uh, we have got kind of slight drizzles of rain pretty much all day today, and uh, that's where it's sometimes difficult to judge it because there are dry patches, there are wet patches, and uh, we've seen quite a few riders come to grief on the uh, descent of the uh, Sir Malo. As we see the group, uh, general regroupment, probably about... Um, Almost 40 riders now at the uh, front of this race. So uh, they will look around, see what teammates they have, see who uh, have got numbers, and then they'll decide how they're going to plan the following 55 kilometres. Well, for those who might have dropped out the back, at least it's scenic. It is a beautiful part of the world around here, the uh, region of Lombardy, which uh, this is the race, just to the north of Milan, around Lake Como, finishing... Uh, I used to finish in Como itself, as you see at uh, the back of the peloton. It was interesting to note, uh, Rob, that um, on the uh, 
Sir Mano that uh, it was in fact uh, Saxo Tinkoff uh, leading uh, Contador up there and uh, Nicholas Roach and Michael Rogers were used in that Mike was up towards the front and, and Mike uh, had a good performance in the week in the Milano Torino um, so obviously they've got options uh, they want to try and push it but towards the top in the steeper parts it was in fact uh, Movistar that came to the front with Quintana so uh, into the uh, penultimate of the climbs that's the Giusalo and we have got a climb towards the finish same as the last couple of years very steep climb and that's where the race has been won and lost we said just before the break that normally if you win this race it comes in twos we go back to Bettini um, we've got uh, Cunigo we've got Cunigo's Gilbert Cunigo's won it three times as well Gilbert so you know the world champion is towards the front he looked very good in the Sermano it's the same Marcel we still having problems with these uh, bikes so uh, again on the attack now behind the main group as we hit this climb so this climb isn't so bad but you've got to remember the race of this distance it does start to bite the legs it's certainly going to be hard now for uh, Marcel Vies would have taken something out the legs and the confidence I tell you what the uh, vocal has got 132 they haven't shown him yet so uh, he is still in front of this race this is group one this is the main peloton, about 40 riders were just catching uh, Marcel Weiss. But again, nobody really looking at controlling the uh, peloton here. Marcus Burghardt there on your screen. German rider riding for BMC. And it's a big day for BMC today. Marco Pinotti puts the end of his career. He'll be going to work for them. You said we hadn't seen Thomas Vauclair yet. And here he is, 1 minute 32 ahead. Always an extremely dangerous man. Whether he's pulling his tongue, shouting away making faces or just uh, simply battling like he does you've got to keep an eye on this man yeah you never know uh what sort of form he's he's in uh when he's on good form he is really on some good form and has proven in the past that he does some great performances uh, but again on his own with uh, just under 55 kilometers to go uh, we have been over the, the hardest climb the Gisalo. It's not too bad, but again, after this uh, distance, it does bite the legs. And a lot of riders just trying to save as much as they can for this final climb. There is a general regroupment now, and uh, the numbers coming to the front. You can see Katusha uh, taking it up. They have got about three or four riders in this front group, including Rodriguez, who won it last year uh, in the thunderstorms. And uh, they have got Danny Marino also in this group. You mentioned Alberto Contador. He lost 30 seconds up Sormano, but you could see his uh, inimitable style just pedalling up towards the front there. Now, the Madonna del Ghisallo climbs up. Maximum 14%, 12% towards the end. As Brian said, there's a nice little bit of a false flat in the middle. Goes up from Bellagio, famous, beautiful place by the lake, up to the Madonna del Ghisallo itself. 500 metres of climbing. That's uh, around 8 kilometres. And this is Thomas Vauclair, who next year, Brian, might well be running in the World Tour. Yeah, it looks very much like that, and, and good luck to them. Uh, they have got a very good team, and uh, I think they're looking at uh, taking on some more riders. So you can just see two minutes back, and the uh, thumbs up for uh, Tommy Vauclair. He's great. He's old school, isn't he? Didn't even look across. Just uh, a nonchalant little uh, acknowledgement there of what happened. And Thomas Vauclair will continue in his own style, and we love him for it as Alberto Condador looks as though he's at the front. Followed by Purito Rodriguez and the rest of the Katusha team. Basso still there pedalling away as well. Heating up to be a very interesting race. Two minutes 20 for Thomas Vauclair. Peloton on the way up to the Madonna del Ghisallo. You're watching the 107th Giro di Lombardia. Talk briefly before a couple of crashes occurred that uh, they'd had this little bit of argy-bargy between uh, Valverde and Rui Costa and, of course, Joaquim Rodriguez as well. Certainly interesting to see any of the war wounds from the World Championships have been healed. Vincenzo Nibali was the man who was really up for it today. He said he's going to start in Argentina nice and early again next year. His wife's heavily pregnant, so he's not going to be going on holiday anywhere. But unfortunately, with uh, the looks of the crash, he might not be able to go on holiday anyway. Look to be limping quite badly. Let's hope that he can have a speedy recovery and enjoy time uh, away from uh, road biking. He says he wants to do some mountain biking in winter. I think it was a nod and a wink to his sponsors to send him a mountain bike over. That is Thomas Vauclair take some food. <laughs> Maybe you wanted a different flavour. 
It's one of these situations where uh, you know goes on the attack without thinking. He, he does a lot of these things in races, but just spur of the moment goes on the attack and just throws that away. He doesn't like that uh, flavour and goes for another flavour. He, obviously, he hasn't um, planned this attack. It just happens. Sometimes this happens in bike racing where uh, you feel good and he went on the attack. Unfortunately, he's on his own. Still a long way to go to the finish and uh, taking a bit of coke there. And uh, then just afterwards getting a gel as we see uh, Kunigo uh, coming back. And he has been in the attacks already today. And uh, they've got a very good uh, team with... Uh, they had a good team, I would have said. Potential winners in there. It's Scarponi, obviously, um, not in the race anymore. But they've still got uh, Diego Ulisse, uh, who won uh, Milano-Torino uh, during the week. So uh, showing some good form. We haven't caught a sight of him uh, in this uh, main group. There's about 40 riders left. I think we can see possibly a pink jersey but we'll wait till we get the uh, the camera confirmation of that well we've had sightings of Matteo Bono and uh, Daniele Pietropoli so far today but uh, nothing as far as Ulisi's being concerned the man who tasted that semi-classic victory this week on the slopes of Superga just outside of Turin Scarponi retiring through a stomach book and of course Spanish champion Errada a little further far behind broom wagon almost close to sweeping him up now then empty and Quebec riding for Africa riding for their charity Quebec and uh, Jacques Janse van Rensburg the uh, South African rider doing his best to stay just ahead of the broom wagon as well it's that sort of race where there's a bit more temptation than in other races like the world's was last week with that epic horrible weather and a lot of uh, criticism for the British riders for getting off rather early in some people's eyes I don't think the gripe was about not winning I think a lot of people criticize the British team for getting off en masse early on into the race and with these end of season races the airport so close down the road in Malpensa there's surely a big temptation to climb off when things aren't going your way. Yeah, it's all about motivation but uh, you get paid to ride from the start of the season all the way through to the, the end of the season so it's, it's very important. Yeah, it was disappointing the uh, the British team but I'm going to just leave it up to the uh, the, the coaches and managers to, to sort that out themselves um, obviously as a Brit it was uh, very disappointing, especially over the last two years when you've won the uh, Tour de France with uh, Bradley Wiggins and Chris Froome and now you had nobody in contention. Hats off to Italy, they really took the race to everybody okay they failed in the end by not claiming a medal and it was all about um uh, costa uh Rui costa and uh, valverde now what's your take on Rodriguez. that yeah it's 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 going to be obviously a difficult one it has happened in the past with um different teams especially the italian team i haven't kind of gelled well together and there has has been a history in the past with uh, valverde he wants to be obviously the number one and well, that's uh, Oscar Frey there from 12 months yeah, ago yeah and that, and, that, and that's what happens when you've got uh, you know two or three winners in that team you have to gel them all together when they ride for ri rival teams it's very difficult when it comes into the world championships to all ride as a team probably the uh, the best team that I've ridden in recent years was when Mark Cavendish won in uh, Copenhagen uh, when uh, the whole British team rode from start to finish okay it was an easier circuit that was a very difficult circuit to do that and we've seen Italy try to do this in so many Many occasions in the past in the World Championships and failed and uh, it was having two Spanish riders towards the front with uh, Rodriguez and Valverde you would have thought that they would have won but Valverde made a huge mistake and just looking at um, Nibali towards the end allowing Rui Costa to go thinking possibly of just getting that silver medal I don't think for once Valverde thought that Rui Costa would get across to Rodriguez he thought maybe the race is already won but uh, that was a huge mistake Philippe Gilbert, winner of this race two years in a row a couple of years ago, and of course the second year that he did win it was at the end of that absolutely magnificent year, the peak of his career and one that will no doubt probably not be matched. Now then, Katusha. Eyes on them throughout the day here. This is uh, Gusev here. I think he is being a distance now at the back of the uh, this group. Um, can't see because he was distance all, also on the uh, Sormano 
uh, that was uh, Gusev the rider in the uh, the Katusha colours of red and white but back to the front of this race come towards 50 kilometres ago and you get the gurning features of uh, Tommy Vauclark we see him so many times on the attack and uh, a lot of the big races uh, he's certainly got a big engine maybe not the most popular of uh, riders in the peloton but uh, for a lot of their donning fans he is i was going to say there's a massive difference say a popularity swing when you put two groups of people the riders themselves perhaps those involved in coaching as well and close to the peloton a lot of people don't like him certainly those sitting at home watching on the telly most of them i would argue do like him he's a character and this is alberto condador now then, a look up the road. Mike tell us he's been distanced, and that is the truth. 51.1 kilometers to go. Contador talking up today as a possibility for him, saying that it was the start, his first race of 2014. Well, dear me, it looks like 2014 might be like 2013 for him. I think he's just wishing to get um, 2013 out of the way. You can see him now, he's uh, really struggling. In the World Championships, he was struggling as well. So by saying you, you, this is the first race of the next season, he's already got his eyes on the next season. He just wants to get rid of the 2013. And I think he just wants to get rid of this race as well um, because he's certainly been really struggling with form. And, and obviously with the, the team as well, not really gel well together. Oleg Tinkov has been obviously in the press, having a go out of him and... Uh, you know, he has to come up as a leader. If you want to be paid the amount of money that uh, Contador is being paid, then you have to deliver. And it's the same throughout um, any sport. But uh, I believe that uh, they said in the press that he was willing to take a pay cut to, uh, to you know, obviously guarantee the future of the team. Talking of pay cuts, what about that news this week? Tom De Hint, 80% pay cut to take the last spot on the Omega Farmer Quick Step uh, roster for next season. That's commitment to your job, isn't it? That is a desire to stay in the pro peloton. Sometimes you have to do these things. Uh, as we see, Chris Anker Sorensen now being distanced uh, at the uh, the back of this uh, main peloton. But it's like he's done a cleaning up job as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but again, it's, it's one of these things when you've only got so many spots and, uh, you know, next year there'll be 18 World Tour teams. So what do you want to do? As Thomas again, what is your choice? What's your opportunity? Do you drop down for more money to uh, Continental Pro? Because I'm pretty sure that uh, maybe there's two or three teams out at the uh, second division team of Continental Pro might have given them the opportunity. Let's not forget only last year, he, uh, you know, brilliance in the, uh, the Giro d'Italia. He finished on the podium. Yeah, but this year has not been fruitful for him. And unfortunately, uh, it's one of these things. And uh, Vacon Soleil now kind of dropping down to second division. So it says to me, taking a pay cut, to keep him in World Tour is a chance you take. It's not all about money for a lot of riders. He wants to stay at the top level. And, uh, you know, hats off to, to a rider like um, Thomas Degen. He will be good um, next year and possibly in the year after, but just to not had the, uh, the results this year, unfortunately for him. Well, talking of Vacon Soleil, and uh, a nice little way for them to say goodbye to the pro peloton as they close their doors at the end of the year. Go onto their website, and they've got a survey going. You can vote for the team's best moment in their five years of activity. We're off for a quick break. We'll see you in a minute. One by one, we say goodbye to those who are dropped on the climb. Madonna del Ghisallo, the destination. 48.1 kilometers to go. Final destination, Lecco, via the Villa Vergano climb, 10 kilometers from the finish. That's where we expect the big moves. Or has the big move already been made? Just ask Thomas Vauclair. I know a lot of you will say, no, he never wins. He just does it for show. We shall see. Saxo Tinkoff also dropping off one by one. Matty Vessel struggling at the moment, fighting to get over this climb, maybe find a second win towards the end. Then another team have brought a strong squad for this one. Yeah, he has uh, really struggled over the last few years. Uh, he was always uh, one of these riders that showed really well in the World Championships. Obviously, he wasn't up there in uh, Toscana uh, this year. But again, the rider is on form for me uh, in the World Championships was uh, Joachim Rodriguez. And that's why we have got two Katusha riders in the red and white at the front of this main group. The other rider that I think that is being looked after by Saxo Tinkov, and that's uh, Maika, who... Uh, rode well during the week and again they are putting their eggs in his basket today um, Contador already dropped as well as many other riders on this uh, climb of the uh, Gisalo. We still have 
um, another climb to come, and that is uh, towards the end. It comes, uh, finishes with uh, about 10 kilometres to go to the finish, and that is where the race over the last two years has been won and lost. So we just have to wait to see if there is any reaction. We can also see, I think it's Cataldo, the uh, town rider for Team Sky, also towards the front in the uh, main group. As the gap goes up to 2 minutes and 34 seconds to Tommy Vocal in front, as we see the uh, support inside the road. Uh, it's the French colours, but uh, they aren't French. Dutch flag? Yes. It's misleading when they hang it out that way, when it seems that the colours seem to go across, rather like the French tricolor. Yeah. French colours, but not French. <laughs> Vuclair out there in front, then. You can see Gasparotto back uh, in the group as well. You mentioned that Cataldo was there for Sky. Now, I wonder if he preempted some bad luck here, because it's Rigoberto Uran's last race with Sky today, and Cataldo's brought some champagne along. He's got it on ice in the bus. The problem is, Rigoberto Uran's nowhere to be seen up there. I think he's already back in the bus and drinking the champagne, isn't he? Yeah, again, it's all about motivation. Iran had a, a nasty off in the World Championships only a week ago. So, uh, again, he was heading for a, a very good finish and a very good end towards the season. Uh, but, again, a difficult race for a lot of riders. This is slightly earlier in the, uh, in the year. It's only, what, a couple of weeks earlier uh, from where it tradi traditionally sat. But, again, it's one of these uh, races where... If you've not got the motivation and you're struggling, there's absolutely no place to hide. Um, but Tommy Volkler is on his own in front. He has been on the attack over the last uh, 10 kilometres. He has pushed an, an advantage of just over two minutes. The main group of about uh, 40 riders hits this uh, Giusalo climb. Uh, but as we can see, it's being whittled down all the time. Cunego. Uh, back by the cars, trying to regain contact. Three-time winner of this race, so he knows this race like the back of his hand. But again, another rider that hasn't really produced the goods. And uh, Lamprey have been doing a few interesting signings as the gap goes up to almost three minutes for uh, Tommy Vokler. Well, the most interesting of those signings is the new world champion. Yep. Rui Costa, and they've already said that he will be the man to lead at the Tour de France next year. So that means if Scarponi stays we're still not sure about. He will go for the Giro d'Italia again, I'm sure. And it will be much the same. But they've been making some interesting signs, as you say. Two minutes 55 now for Tom Avoclair. And belief will start to grow. Certainly there's some big, big names, and there's a lot of firepower still back in the group. You're talking about uh, Rui Costa. I think it's uh, the last world champion to win the Tour of Lombardy was, I think, 2006, was it, it Bettini? Was Bettini, yeah. The seventh in total, yeah. and he's been become the eighth tonight. If he wins, but it looks as if he's on good enough form. On the uh, Thermano, he was up there towards the front, and uh, Quintana and Valverde pushed on. They went away on the descent. They were joined by Gasparotto, then Caruso from um, Catuccia and uh, Santa Romita from BMC. The five riders um, came together pretty much at the bottom of this, the descent of the Thermano. Then it all came together just as it came together. The uh, the effervescent uh, Tommy Vokler went on the attack for Europe Car. Uh, he has been on the attack for the last 10, almost 15 kilometres now, and he's pushed out an advantage of almost three minutes. As we get further up this climb, it starts to get a bit um, steeper of uh, about 9.5% uh, towards the top. But again, a good effort by uh, Tommy Vokler, as we said before. Maybe not the most popular rider in the peloton, uh, but uh, certainly... Um, respected by a lot of the fans out there. They love him. On the slopes, uh, up the way to Madonna del Ghisallo. Big cycling museum at the top. All of the winners of the Giro d'Italia in recent years have donated their pink jerseys to uh, the museum. The bells toll as uh, the riders go past. A great, beautiful look up to the church itself from Tom Avoclair. That's destined to go down in preview videos and, of course, reviews of this great race in the future. A salute to its magic, a salute to its history. Now is he going to go on to be the man to add his name into the Palmares? We shall see. The Roll of Honour for 2013 needs a name next to it. The man to throw his hat into the ring from a long way out is Tom Avoclair. He goes over and past Madonna del Ghisallo. Now descending, the final climb is the one that will wait him 10 kilometres from the end. 
That's another nation that were not represented that well towards the front of the race in the uh, World Championships either, and that was France. So uh, maybe uh, Vokler is trying to uh, have a good end towards the season, and again, looking towards that World Tour licence for, for next year. After Uscatel, uh, the uh, deal with Alonso not happening, back in Soleil disappearing, and it looks as if uh, Europcar are trying to be that 18th uh, World Tour team. So um, the door is open for them because um, next year I thought maybe I am would uh, try and look at that by taking on uh, Chavanel, but it doesn't seem to uh, seem to be happening. They haven't obviously applied, not that I know of uh, recently. But uh, it's going to be very interesting to see if Europe can get that final uh, World Tour license because next year, from 19 World Tour teams, it will go down to 18 World Tour teams, and then there is a big fight uh, for the uh, the wild card places for a lot of the Grand Tours next year. One minute 35 and counting. That's the gap. It was almost three minutes at the last GPS check. We're going to get the exact time when they cross the top of the Schizallo climb. Just looking at uh, the lime green jersey. Obviously, uh, Peter Sagan has uh, climbed off earlier on today, but it does look as if Ivan Basso is in this uh, front group for for the Italian team. Now, be careful on this descent. We've seen crashes galore on uh, the way down from uh, Muro di Sormano. A couple of crashes very early on during the day as well. We've seen uh, Andy Schleck retire. We saw Peter Sagan unable to last the pace on the first main climb of the day. He's probably on the plane home already now, is Peter. 167 in there for Omega Pharma quick step is Peter Seri. You just see on the far side there, you can see Dan Martin, a 101, another um, previous podium finisher in the uh, Lombardi before. And uh, just at the back there, also for AG2R. They have a couple of riders there. Possevivo did look good in the Sermano. Uh, Betancourt still hanging in there, coming back to uh, some form. But uh, only about well, about 25 riders now left at the front in the front peloton with Tommy Vokler on his own at 2 minutes and 49 seconds. 2.49 it is then as they cross the chapel that is dedicated to the sport of cycling. The sport, the drama, the history, just about everything. This is a special place and if you're ever in the area, get on your bike, have a ride up and just take a look at all the history of this race, the Giro d'Italia. This is really one of the heartlands of cycling. Mythical place, a magical race, and there are 42.7 kilometres that remain. You can just see uh, Visconti there at the back on the left-hand side. He has been on the deck already in this race, but he wants it so much uh, at the start of this race. He was uh, an outsider at 33-1. to 1. So um, he stands uh, a very good chance uh, of uh, doing well in this race. I would think that uh, over the Giusallo now that uh, someone like Visconti would uh, try and go in front, try and chase uh, Volkler down and allow the world champion of Rui Costa, Valverde and Quintana, just to possibly try and sit back. Uh, but uh, this man is uh, setting the race alight. It's two and a half minutes he has on that uh, group, just going over the top of the Giusallo. And uh, Tommy Volkler has um, just the road in front of him. One more climb, and then it will be in towards the finish. But uh, this climb towards the end is very, very steep. And uh, again, after 242 kilometres by the finish, but they'll hit it at about 230 kilometres, so uh, very difficult indeed. We see Visconti in the, uh, the ripped jersey and uh, on his elbow. Uh, a few riders have been off today, but... A lot of the riders have climbed off. Visconti obviously wants to try and do well in this race today. Carlos Betancourt running for Azure de Zella Mondial. Just looking back in the cars. He's enjoyed riding in Italy himself this year. This is a man who enjoyed a great Giro d'Italia as well, but as Brian said, he's been on the deck today. Must be horrible when it's cold, wet and rainy. That's not Valerio Agnoli, by the way. And it's certainly not Astana team, it's Movistar, it's Gio Visconti, and a man, as you said, who's at fairly generous odds for this race, given the fact that uh, he could well be dangerous. Yeah, he's, he's in a strong Movistar team. They have got numbers. Quintana, Valverde, Ray Costa. Visconti is one of the outsiders that, uh, before, if you can remember last year's race when Ray Costa um, was on the attack before we hit the final climb. And I was thinking with a strong Movistar team that um, sort of small group attacking to go away after the Giusallo. 
uh, there's an opportunity that Visconti could take the pressure off um, the rest of them. And if he gets on, he's a sort of rider. If he gets on to that final climb, he could possibly stay away to the finish, thinking that uh, maybe Nibali and Rodriguez would, um, you know, look at each other. But uh, Rodriguez has got the green light now. Uh, I think he is the still the odds-on favourite for this race now that uh, Nibali has crashed out. The back wheel of uh, Tomar Vaclair's bike still out in front. This is Yuri Trofimov, despite the fact that uh, our graphics department seemed to think that it was Joaquim Rodriguez. And it's not Joaquim Rodriguez still. I seem to have uh, a little problem with their screen. They might want to give it a wipe down a dust or something because we had Giovi Sconti named as something else two minutes ago. And Purito Rodriguez is a little thinner set than that, let's say. Trofimov as well with uh, the capes hanging out the back pocket. Three minutes and 11. Thank you very much, Yuri Trofimov. Russian rider for Katusha. Gap has grown again, Brian. Yeah, three minutes and 11 seconds now inside uh, 40 kilometers to go. And Tommy Vokler looks as if he's um, he's looking good for this moment in time. Uh, obviously, he got over the uh, Sermano just at the tail end of the uh, front group. He was kind of slightly distanced, but it uh, came back on the, on the descent. And uh, when the whole race came back together, he went on the attack, maybe thinking of taking uh, a group with him, because when we came off the uh, Sermano, um, the Giusalo was up next, and uh, a good time to go on the attack to try and take some riders with him. But unfortunately, nobody went with him, and uh, he finds himself alone. Very difficult to do the last, what, 50 kilometres on your own, but uh, Tommy Volkler really concentrated in trying to do that. Trofimov now makes it back to this main peloton of about 30-odd riders. And I think that um, he would have to go straight to the front. You can just see one of the other uh, Katusha riders at the back, and I think that might be uh, Danny Marino. So uh, they'll have to call in their uh, troops to try and bring this gap down to a manageable distance. But it's going to be very difficult for Volkler on his own. No place to hide in front. Uh, with still one steep climb to come towards the finish. For Claire, pulling faces, they're always worth a watch as well. As I said, that image of him passing the uh, small uh, chapel at the top of Gizalo, I'm sure will be used in promo videos and previews and all sorts of dramatic montages for years to come. It was absolutely beautiful. He really does know his history. He salutes it, whatever you think of him as a face puller, a bike rider, whatever. It was absolutely magnificent to see, and I'm sure that we'll see those images again and again and again. And every year they go past this chapel, it seems that the roads are wet through. You joked in the ad break there, they should rename this race to the one <laughs> of uh, the wet roads. <laughs> yeah, I think every race in Scotland should be called that as well. But uh, yeah, it's traditionally known as the, the uh, race of the fallen leaves. And uh, again, it's just moved uh, slightly um, towards the, the World Championships. I think a lot of them were thinking that, uh, you know, you ride the Worlds and then um, go to uh, Lombardy, which has produced uh, very good winners in the past. But uh, not um, a very good day for this man here, Manuel Morini. But just looking at the composites uh, com uh, of this group, about 30, 35 riders, uh, we know that we have some uh, very good riders from Movistar and uh, Katusha also have numbers, but it seems to be Katusha that wants to ride down Tommy Vokler more than Valverde's team of uh, Movistar. So Movistar not doing anything whatsoever, and they have some cards to play. They've got Quintana, Visconti, obviously he's been on the deck, but uh, I think he'll be kind of used up towards the end if needed. But uh, they've got the world champion, Rui Costa. What sort of week has he had? because uh, when you become a world champion, you have to do some of your uh, the PR stuff. So I'm not too sure. He looked OK on this Sermano, the steepest and the hardest climb here in uh, Lombardy. Valverde, we really know, don't know what he's thinking at all because he's made so many mis mistakes, especially in the uh, World Championship. So again, still a long way to go. Dan Martin, also in this uh, front group, another uh, rider that could possibly try and win by launching an attack in the final climb. But I guarantee this man here, Cunigo, as he gets a turbo bottle, will not be adding a fourth one in Lombardy this year. That was an extremely sticky bottle there. Eh? Must have been coated in sugar. Yeah, it's not a sticky one, it was a turbo one. <laughs> 
Leclerc with 35.4 kilometers to go. Last climb has decided the race in both of the two years it's been put into the parkour so far. Everything points towards the uh, Villa Vergano. All the main favorites talked about it, but we've got to remember that half of the main favorites have either crashed, DNF for other reasons. We had a did not start as well, unfortunately, for a mega farmer quick step. Mikhail uh, Kwiatkowski was taken ill, deemed not fit enough to start the race this morning, so we were one down before we even started. And it's such a shame, really, in that aspect, because it could have almost been, and still could be on the final climb, a sort of World Championship Chapter 2 because of all the great climbers and one-day riders that came to this race and came in form having worked to peak for last week's race. Yeah, a lot of the uh, riders that uh, were up there towards the uh, end of the World Championships uh, will have pretty much the good form in uh, Lombardy. Whether they're totally motivated uh, with the weather, uh, I'm not too sure. But uh, again, Katusha having uh, two riders towards the back there, um, Trofimov and Danny Marino, with the two riders towards the back again. And uh, looking towards the front, they have got uh, one rider towards the front. Then you have, I think, it's Saxo Tinkov. It could be, I think, from this height, uh, possibly the world champion sitting there in third place at Rui Costa. But again, two riders uh, riding down Tommy Vokla. I'm pretty sure that they'll need some more manpower. But you can see the peloton all in one line. They know that the pace is up. You have to respect Tommy Vokla because he has pulled off some uh, great performances in the past. You can just see this main group of about 30, 35 riders all in one line, which shows that uh, the pace is up. Pace is up. And Thomas Leclerc is still in the lead. 34 k's to go. No food left. There That's it is. I think they're concentrating. There was just uh, something in the uh, rear derailleur there. Sometimes, oh, warmer, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, sometimes the, uh, something jumps out of the pocket. You go in to get some food and you forget sometimes your arm warmers are in there. Arm warmer comes out into uh, the uh, back wheel of the derailleur. We've seen this happen in uh, Tommy Vockler and when a bottle jumped out and, and stuck between the, the wheel and his frame and he actually fell off badly and I think it was a tour of Belgium. So, um, again, there are some hazards on the roads. Roads as uh, Trofimov, I think he's been uh, sent back to the, the team car now uh, to have a wee word. So he's not having the best of times at the moment. And again, with race radios and World Tour events, they will be in complete control. So we see the main peloton, probably about 35, maybe just over riders and now left chasing down Tommy Vokler. But um, just interesting to see who is actually doing the chasing at the front because it does look as if it's probably two or three teams. Uh, but no n real numbers been put up. So with 33 kilometres to go, still have one rider in front. That's the Frenchman riding on a Colnago Italian bike. And again, that will give him some support here in Lombardy. Certainly will. There's been a few visits to bike shops this week. Chris Froome was down at uh, Pinarello's place getting some measurements taken a bit of uh, PR as well. He was due to start this race, but has made a late decision not to do. That left Sky with just uh, a six-man team for this, as Damiano Cornegal still struggles away out the back. Not his day, but he is fighting on. Just while we attempt to get confirmation of those riding on the front, a quick word of those who are leaving, as I quickly mentioned, Marco Pinotti, Mr. Professor, leaving the pro saddle. Today, his last Italian race, he'll continue to work in cycling for his BMC racing team as uh, teammate Philippe Gilbert is at the back there in the red and black of BMC. There's uh, Derek Bellamakis, who's decided to end his career very early to concentrate on his studies. Dave Zabriskie as well, he's confirmed today that it's his final day of racing. I'm just looking to see the uh, rider from Vacon Soleil is waving at the moment. Uh, that does look to me as if that's uh, Juan Antonio Flesher. And it was reported that we he had a climbed report that off. He climbed <laughs> off, yeah. Very, very early on in the day. I thought it was a bit surprising, but again, perhaps just symptomatic of the state of the season that we were in. This is the sort of racing that he really does love. Well, we had the uh, Piccolo Lombardi uh, yesterday, and that was uh, one Piccolo Lombardi is for the uh, young riders. That was uh, yesterday, and it was the David Viella of Team Colpark that won that in three, minutes, uh, three hours and 53 
uh, minutes and 53 seconds. So a uh, good result uh, from David Viella, and I think he will be joining a World Tour team next year. For Claire, as we get these wonderful images overlooking uh, Lago Lario, more commonly known as Lake Como in the English-speaking world. Just looking at the results in the week of um, the Milano-Torino race and uh, gives an indication, Elise won that from Rafael Maika. And I know that a friend of mine in Scotland, uh, Stephen McGinty, has got five pounds on him. Uh, I think he got them about 100 to one. Certainly, Saxo Tinkoff are looking after him today. Uh, he looks in very good form. He rode towards the front in the Sermano, and uh, he has looked really impressive over the uh, last week or so and looked impressive today. Well, talking of tipsters, how are you feeling at home? We'd like to hear from you at Rob Hatch TV or at Bryce Smithy on Twitter. Hashtag your tweets, Eurosport Cycling, please. And let's uh, hear who you think might win it. Getting towards that time now, let's make a selection, take a guess. There's about 30 or so riders who could make the win. Who's going to do it? Well, looking at the history, when you look back, it's always uh, one and twos. And uh, Bettini, Gilbert, Cunigo, I think for me, Rodriguez is still looking very good. Just sitting in the main group. And uh, again, for me, last year, uh, when uh, we had obviously bad pictures and the run in towards the finish, and when Rodriguez emerged, he won that race. He the, was the world's number one at that period of time. So. Again, Rodriguez is uh, the favourite. Now Nibali is not in uh, the race anymore. Uh, Katusha have to uh, try and contain with 30 kilometres to go the uh, attack of Tommy Vokler. But again, just looking at the results of Milano Torino during the week, Tommy Vokler finished in eighth place. He's only 15 seconds down. But the riders that were up there, Danny Marino was third, Possevivo was up there in fourth, Contador, he's been dropped already. Pelizzotti, Dan Martin is up there in 11th place. So um, still a long way to go in this race before we see who the winner will likely to be as Tommy Vokler comes down onto the lakeside. Last Frenchman to win this race, 1997. Laurent Jalabert. 11 French winners of this race in previous history. 67 from Italy as uh, Thomas Vauclair just takes that one nice and uh, calmly. He just kind of straightened up the bike uh, because obviously the blue and the white paint, he didn't want to hit it at uh, any angle. So he just kind of alters his uh, body to go over it in as a much upright position as possible. Good of you on the left. Don't call it the Belle Paese for nothing. Two minutes 53, the gap has gone down slightly. Of course, uh, immediately went out and got two minutes fairly quickly. Only since been able to extend that lead beyond three. Just dipped below that mark again. And as we saw a moment ago, the peloton were in fact strung out. There was hard work being done, so the fruits of that are being seen. But again, on these up and down sections, it's not going to be easy. No, not at all, uh, especially when you're on your own. Uh, just quite unfortunate for Vokler that uh, nobody went with them. And it just goes to show you that uh, it was kind of spur of the moment. Everybody came off the uh, Sermano and uh, the, the hardest climb of this uh, year's Lombardy. And uh, they decided to regroup. Excellent place to attack, but uh, nobody else thought the same. Pantani vive ancora. Pantani still alive. The memory of the man that lives long and lives on. He still, still to this day, is the man that keeps cycling tradition, cycling tifoseria or uh, supportership, if you like, alive in this part of the world. Whatever your ideas of him, and I know because of his checkered past, a lot of people have preconceived ideas, which is fine. It's just so important if you're looking at Italian cycling culture to know how important the man is. He is everywhere when you see the ride. And of course, on graffiti as they come around the corner. And we've seen it twice, thanks to our cameras. Now then, another gel and a little, little push along. 
all these things count and uh, again he's uh, taking on as much as possible not even taking it on he actually just holds on to the car or holds on to uh, what he was given and he throws it away immediately just looking at the front of the peloton and now and we can see the rider from Katusha has come around the bend Saxo Tinkov and the world champion also towards the front and I think for me the uh, world champion Ray Costa is being used to ride Tommy Vokler down. So uh, now Tommy Vokler is on the same stretch of road as the uh, Peloton. Peloton just coming along the, the leg sides. This gap will start to come down. It has to come down. You will not want to give Tommy Vokler a minute coming into this final climb. We're talking about the last French winner, Laurent Jalabert, to win this race in 1997. Thanks to Irish Peloton on Twitter, by the way, Cillian Kelly, for pointing out that uh, Jalabert's victory in 1997 at this race was the last French win in any of the Monument Classics. So that, indeed, would be a very, very special piece of riding if he could pull it off today. Just under 27 kilometres to go. Remains a big ask. But of course, there needs to be organization, there needs to be concerted effort, and of course, there needs to be that M word, that big bit of motivation that we see might be lacking in a few riders towards the end. Well, you can just see that, uh, you know, now the world champion, Ray Costa, the head of this uh, main group now, all in white uh, with the world championship bands, and uh, they are thinking of possibly two riders, Valverde and uh, Quintana, maybe a, bit, a wee bit of a kind of repayment, but uh, the world champion is being uh, riding down a Vauclair at the front. I mean, you get three riders, because we did notice that uh, Saxo Tinkoff were involved with the chase, also Katusha. It means that th this man will find it very difficult to stay in front. And most of the people on Twitter now probably thinking of uh, Wacom Rodrigo's Perito uh, for the win here in uh, a defense finishing line. Porito did it last year. Can he do it again? That would uh, be an interesting pattern after uh, Olivia Zaug's win. We had two years previous of Philippe Gilbert taking the honours. Two minutes and 40 seconds. That gap really isn't budging too much. Ivan Santaromita in there in the Italian national jersey as well. There's Emanuele Sella. Wow. Hello, cycling of the past, right at the back of the peloton. Yeah, he's going to hang it on, but he's still there. Uh, just in front in Team Sky is Cataldo, I think the only uh, Sky rider, I think, in this uh, front group. The rider at the front of uh, this group was Vicioso and, uh, for Katusha. So Vicioso riding for his man, Perito Rodriguez. Um, Danny Marino just uh, sitting in this group also. Uh, Tommy Vocal just putting his hands up, and he'll be asking for gels and bottles pretty much all the way in towards the finish. Pretty sure that he'll be throwing a lot of the stuff away at the side of the Italian roadside. But uh, any little bit of um, any bit of help will help him because he has been out for the last kind of 25 kilometres. So he just takes that, that bit of a, a gel or, or a bar. I think by this time, most of the riders have taken the solid foods, so it's all about gels. And uh, you can just see him taking it now, the car coming up constantly giving him as much support as he can as we said just earlier that uh, perfect place to attack uh, but uh, no one else thought of going with him at that time so Vokler in front this gap will start to come down because still a lot of riders in the, this main peloton about 30 35 riders interesting you mentioned fueling and food there Brian I know we ask these sorts of things a lot and try to give the viewers at home the best insight into how riders prepare how they go on about refueling the bodies throughout the race but you've ridden on these roads you lived and trained in Como for quite a while. This particular race, with all its ups and downs, oh, we'll get onto that in a minute because there's been a bit of a spill. One of the I am riders down. Oh, and yet again, awful look Marcel today Wies. for Marcel Vies. Third time he's been down. It's that Betancourt as well. And it looks as though it is Carlos Betancourt of Colombia Nagia does uh, seem to be his uh, fairly distinctive body shape. It's oh, just wait. tiredness at the end of the day when it comes down to it. Um, just, just looking to see it. It's not it's uh, Possevivo, yeah, Possevivo, not Betancourt. So again, that's what happens. Uh, Kuniko comes past. Just one of these things that uh, a wee bit of tiredness, and uh, that's what happened. It looked as if it was Possevivo just sliding out. He was the one of the first riders to come down. A reaction in the uh, the back of this uh, peloton, and uh, Martha Weiss comes down. A lot of tired bodies at this moment. Uh, the back, and you know, all it needs is to uh, to overcook one of these corners, go into it too fast, maybe overlapping the wheel, and uh, Possevivo comes down. And again, he's another rider that will be um, important for AG2R when it comes to or 
even the, the Italians to win their own classic today because Possevivo showing some good form uh, during the week in Milano Torino and uh, again an outsider for uh, a win here in Lecco. 24 guys to go. Now then, let's get on to uh, that little topic about refueling and eating and drinking. You've ridden around these roads. You lived and trained in Como for quite a while when you were with uh, Motorola, I think it was, back in the 90s. Is this race a little more difficult than the rest to try and fuel your body for? Because, again, it's a one-day classic. You're not racing either side of it, so you're not into a rhythm like you would be on a Grand Tour. There's ups and downs. There's bad weathers. There's moments that you really need to be in the front group towards the end quite a lot. The thing about this race is it's refueling. It's got kind of five climbs on it, but uh, if you have be given team orders, sometimes you can forget. A lot of the times in this race, it's a descent. It's very difficult to eat in the descent. So, and obviously climbing up, you go up the likes of the uh, Sermano, and uh, you're climbing that for what? Maybe about 20 minutes, uh, maybe more than that. And then you come down the descent again, the descent 10, 15 minutes. So all of a sudden you've not uh, had a chance to eat uh, because it's very difficult to eat uphill and even more difficult to eat going downhill. So uh, again, sometimes the riders have to be reminded uh, about eating, very important. And uh, especially in a race of this length of 242 kilometers. Back into the province of Lecco, out of the latest tunnel. Plenty of them down here. We've got the Melgonian Pare. The cliffs drop into the lake. Gap is down slightly now, and perhaps he's starting to tire a little. That in addition to uh, perhaps harder work going on behind. Two minutes and 24 seconds at the last count. And as you can see, there's Lecco in the distance. And it's not really nice weather, is it? It is absolutely lashing it down with rain. 22 and a half k's to go. And we're starting to get quite a few similarities to last year again. Yeah, last year we had uh, thunderstorms and uh, obviously we had uh, difficulty in, in bringing the pictures. But uh, again, so it's not too cold. You can just see Tommy Vockler in uh, short arms. Most of the riders are at about uh, 17, 18 degrees here at the finish in uh, Lecco. But again, it's that constant drizzle, um, you know, some dry roads, some kind of wet and patches and things like that. Very difficult racing conditions to race in. But uh, I tell you what, this bunch will have to get their act together. Katusha and Movistar might have to put another rider towards the front to try and bring this man back because uh, we know what he's capable of. Still a healthy advantage, 2 minutes and 25 seconds. But I think there's still enough firepower left in the peloton behind to bring this man back. Still he goes, still he works, still he pulls faces. Thomas Vauclair giving it his all for Europe Cup. I tell you what, he's going to have a, a lot of uh, Italy shouting at the screens. I know he's uh, a French rider, but he does ride an Italian bike, a Colnago. So uh, a lot of support in this country as we see the uh, peloton behind coming through the tunnel. Well, it's fantasia, as they call it as well. It's magic. This is the sort of riding they love. And part of the reason, I'll refer back to the Pantani comment around 10 minutes ago. That's why they love cycling in this part of the world. It's the type of cycling they love. They don't want to ride on watts and power meters. They want to see attacks. They want to see invention, creativity, and drama. And that's what they're seeing here with Tom Overclair. Whether he pulls it off or not is another matter, but it is wonderful to watch. Let's just hope that we can see a lot of it because that weather is getting a little worse. It's not stopping people on the side of the roads. Brilliant to see. Again, teeth gritted. Verclair accelerates out the roundabout and attempts to keep his gap as big as possible. Yeah, you can just see uh, he's starting to tire. He's out the saddle, uh, especially when he comes through that roundabout. He's on the flat. He's uh, heads rocking, but again, these are telltale signs in a, a normal rider, but uh, Vauclair is not a normal rider. Uh, he'll go, give 100%. Guarantee, if you've got Tommy Vauclair on the team, he'll give 100%. And uh, he's always uh, super motivated. And I just have pictures of him in the Tour de France where he was hanging on to that yellow jersey all the years ago and everybody thought he was dropped and then he'd come back and using every muscle in his body. But uh, he's puffing and blowing a bit. I think he's starting to feel the effects of the last 20 odd kilometers of being in the front on his own. Hello at home. They'll be showing all around the world. Glad those roads are on open. Not a great place to stand. But anywhere to watch this bike race. Bit of shelter as well. I can tell you that Lecco is full of people as it always is for this race. Como hosting the finish. They 
do tend to move the finish around every few years here. Of course, we started from Bergamo today, which had never been the start of the race. It had seen uh, a few famous finishes. But Lecco is uh, a perfect setting for it. And with this brilliant climb of Villa Vergano just before, it really sets it up. That's that same roundabout. So I guess suspect this uh, time gap is uh, not um, anywhere near two and a half minutes. It looks to be as if it's uh, probably just over a minute um, because that was the same point, that roundabout with Tommy Vokal come through. So this uh, race a lot closer. And I think we think Saxo Tinkoff still got that man at the front of world champion and still sitting in second place. I think this is uh, Michael Rogers, the Aussie and uh, the Saxo Tinkoff team ridden well today, rode well up the uh, Sermano, riding at the front with uh, Nicholas Roach. Nicholas Roach now dropped the world champion Rui Costa. Then you have two riders from AG2R. I think uh, that's Sherelle that's behind the world champion and uh, Betancourt. Betancourt getting stronger and stronger. Um, he had a terrific uh, Giro d'Italia. But again, there's still a lot of riders just sitting on the wheels and waiting for this final climb. Well, I hope he's listening to his race radio today, that's all I can say, because uh, he had one of those embarrassing moments in the Giro, I think, as well, when he didn't quite know what was going on because <laughs> the earphone was out by the side of his jersey when it should have been plugged into his ear. Was it when he forgot that Belkov was in front? That's the one. <laughs> Thought he won. We've seen a few of those this year, comedy moments. Do you but see we won't one another today. Philip Gilbert, the uh, number 54, uh, Greg Van Avermaet, I think it's the rider behind him, and number 57. So uh, both uh, riders from BMC in towards the uh, front with uh, Santa Marita right next to him in the uh, Italian Champions jersey. The one of the pink jerseys moving up, that would be the second rider in the pink jersey on the left-hand side would be, I would think, Ulisse. Ivan Basso still right at the front as well. And uh, while we've been on air, it sounds as though there's finally been an agreement with Mr. Tinkov and Cannondale. And I'll tell you what, that's going to be an interesting kit next year, the yellow and the green together. Leclerc looking around, waiting, waiting and waiting whilst he continues to pedal. 8.6 k's more or less from the start of this final climb. We'll just have a think about what is coming up because it's going to jump on us fairly quickly. Last climb of the day, it is of course the uh, Villa Vergano. It's actually called, the climb itself is called the uh, Salita which is climb in Italian, the Ello, lasts 3.2 kilometers. You got 243 meters, average gradient of 7.4, and there's a maximum of 15% in there. And after 230 kilometers, that's got to hurt. Tom Averclair of France and Europe car still leads with 18.1 kilometers to go of the 107th foot tour of Lombardy, the Giro di Lombardia. The next climb, the final climb up to Villa Vergano, the uh, Salita di Ello, as it's named, goes up from Oggiono. Easy enough, relatively easy in cycling terms, and the 15% gradient comes well within the last 500 to 1 kilometer or so. So it's not easy at all. You've got to start well, but more importantly, Brian, you've got to finish it well to get over the top as well. Yeah, and you still have to have uh, some legs uh, to uh, to go on the descent and, and take it all the way in towards the finish. Tommy Vokler still in front, uh, one of his uh, Europe car riders just sitting in third place, um, trying to... Uh, Trying to just hold the wheels, uh, but again, a 1 minute 22 as expected, this gap coming down very, very quickly now. Michael Rogers is uh, getting help at the front by Katusha rider Caruso. You can just see the rider um, from Eurocab just sitting in third place. So two riders trying to bring back Tommy Vokla. And we suspected that the uh, the body mannerisms of Vokla showing a bit of stress with the effort he's actually put in and uh, the gap of two minutes and 25. But we came off that kind of tricky descent just after where we saw a positive evil uh, crash. The gap then was 2.25. So now with one minute 17, down with uh, just about 17 kilometers to go so the winner for me is going to come from the main group behind of about 30 35 but who's it going to be there's still a lot of riders that we haven't really seen well, I want to ask you about Ivan Basso. He lives fairly close. He lives in Varese, just down the road where, uh, if you've been to Milan, you may have landed at the Malpensa Airport, just down the road from that. It's close to Lake Como, it's close to these climbs. He trains on them almost every day. 
He's not had a great year. He had his horrible saddle sores that kept him out of uh, the Giro d'Italia. He came back, of course, and rode in the world. So it was looking great and had to yeah. abandon there. That put pay to his World Championship uh, prospects as well. He talked himself up coming to this race today. He said he felt good as well. Verkler now losing time. Bassa going strong in the bunch. But of course, Bassa with this quite short climb still to come. Is it his sort of climb? Because no. he's a man who likes the long climbs, likes to go yeah. at his pace, doesn't get out the saddle, and any change in gradient and change in pace is usually pretty horrible for him. The riders that are going to excel in this final climb um, that are in this front group, you, we're already kind of talked about them. As um, <laughs> Falkler again, he's he's very animated towards the front. He's Never. Getting, He's getting tired. He's just wanting to know what way to go. He's trying to think. He's coming up towards a, a road junction and wants to try in the shortest way. You are looking at, uh, by the things of uh, Saxo Tinkoff towards the front, uh, Micah um, would be a, a very good uh, rider in this type of uh, climb. You've got Valverde, Quintana have shown even in the, his form in the Tour of Britain. You can't dis, um, discount Dan Martin as well. Uh, Joaquin Rodriguez. Also, uh, Danny, Marino, Danny Moreno, his uh, teammates. Uh, I was going to say Poissevivo, but obviously he's crashed out now. Um, but so many, so many riders. You just see the rider from Michael Rogers. Caruso is the rider from Katusha, second place there in the red and the white. Cyril Gautier for the Euro Car. Visconti up towards the front. So you can just see these uh, crash. Um, a victim of a crash earlier on today for Movistar, sitting in the fourth place. Ivan Basso up there. You can't really discount. Van Avermaet and uh, Gilbert, um, but again, they have been kind of hanging on, they have been distanced in the, uh, the last two climbs, but they're still there, and uh, although this climb is, what, about three kilometres long? Just over three kilometres long, the yeah. hardest part, well it's within sort of the end kilometre. Yeah. You just see um, Sherelle just bringing up, um, is that uh, Bettencourt, or is Possevivo made it back to the front of this uh, race? We'll just kind of have to wait and see. Very difficult to pick these uh, riders out. But, uh, yeah, Eurocar ridden well. You can just see Cyril Gautier, the rider, in their picture now for Eurocar. Looks Grimacy. as though he's been at face pulling lessons off Tommy as well. Well, he's repaid his dues to uh, his uh, teammate uh, Valverde. Uh, his job is done. The world champion from uh, last week. He has uh, been riding at the front to bring back Tommy Vauclon. Just look at the gap now, uh, as he started at almost three minutes. So, uh, Rui Costa now brings it back to 101 and job over for him. I know quite a few of my friends in Spain are going to be absolutely furious about that. Repaying work? There shouldn't have been any work done the other week, surely. <laughs> Rui Costa, though, world champion. I'm not sure about those wide shorts on a side note. Would have stayed fairly white today, looking at it. He's been pretty lucky. It's a typical day where there are going to be all sorts of colours, but white at the end of it. But he's finished, he's done, and he's done a great job today. Rainbow jersey, that is the, probably the uh, last of the main riding that we'll see him do in Movistar colours. Well, you don't like to be dropped as the world champion. You want to kind of fight and stay in there. But uh, again, they have used up uh, Rui Costa rather than uh, Visconti. Visconti being an Italian rider, you think with the uh, riders that have got in there with uh, Visconti, uh, Valverde and uh, Quintana, so they've decided to, uh, which is a bit, you know, respectful for Visconti being an Italian rider, because he could have been easily used. But now we see the riders from Iam come towards the front. Juan Chop. Now that is an interesting name. He can climb, he can descend, he can do just about everything. Remember, Cimacopi, Giro d'Italia. I think it was 2010 when he was up against uh, Gibo Simoni. Gibo was out there to get the glory on his last ever Giro d'Italia. He wanted the Cima Coppi. Chop was cruel enough to take it away from him right at the top. He is a man who can win epic bike days, and he might be a man to have a go here. In the meantime, this is still our leader, and uh, Tom Avoclair with blood on his chin there. I wonder if he's been down while we haven't been looking, or is that from the earlier fall that we saw briefly? I'm not too sure where it's from. Maybe uh, something's come up um, from from the road or something that we never caught that. But uh, again, uh, not too much of a battle. We can see three riders there from uh, Lamprey in the pink and the blue. Trophy Moff, it's all over for him. He's done his work for today. Michael Rogers also we've seen uh, drifting off the back. Uh, a lot of these riders have ridden well for their team today. It's up to the team leaders now to finish it off. Coming around this roundabout again with 30-odd riders in this uh, peloton. Tommy Vokler only 41 seconds in front. 
Again, I saw a few people questioning the fact that we labelled Rui Costa as having a really good race today. He's been doing work for a team work and he's done his job. He uh, he brought that. He really nope. did help bring that gap back together. No, nope, like he did, uh, and and he probably chose to do that uh, after becoming world champion. Sometimes you've got your your kind of PR and press to do, and maybe come into this race because um, you don't lose your form in a, in a week. So uh, it's been very difficult for him, but it's all coming back together thanks to his help. Visconti, the latest to take up the mantle of the work on the front. So you've got to think that it's all in for Valverde. It looks very much like that, uh, but uh, Quintana also uh, of the uh, Sermano. It was uh, Valverde and Quintana that uh, were doing the damage on the descent more than the, the ascent. So uh, again, Visconti comes towards the front and uh, to again and bring back this man in front who's been in, in front since about the uh, just inside the last 50 kilometres he went on the attack. Really suffer now 34 seconds uh, back to the uh, Visconti led peloton. Basso sitting there in, in third place. Shirel. Uh, number 15 for AG2R so as we said earlier, all over for uh, Saxo Tinkoff's Michael Rogers End of the season for Mick Rogers Great bit of work at the front from him to close the gap as well Now then, Thibaut says de jeu Thibaut Pinot Thibaut Where have you been? He's Hidden. been ducking and diving and that's what we've mentioned, uh, there's some, some good riders in here that we haven't really mentioned at all so uh, they've been hiding away in this uh, main peloton so uh, we could see some surprises, but it's going to be very difficult because uh, Movistar still have Quintana and Valverde in this uh, very depleted peloton now. I think probably under 30 riders left at the front. Waiting for Elise to show his colours as well. In the meantime, Verclair will fight on towards the death, as I'm sure that his uh, principles and his morals will only allow him to do. Meanwhile, the spectator gets the photo he's been waiting for all day. Just 30 seconds, in fact, it's just less than 30 seconds now as the pace continues to be up behind. Jovis Conti on the front. A couple of wheels back, we have an Agir de Zer rider, Mikael Scherhel. Remember, they still have Pozzo Vivo and Betancourt in there. And here we go then. Salita Di Ello starting. Goes up 500 metres. That is... Uh, the total climb, 243 metres, the proper stat below. And again, it's just over three kilometres long. And after that, it's descent into Lecco itself. Yeah, and you see Quintana, he's actually looking after uh, Valverde on the left-hand side. And uh, Juan Antonio Flesher comes up uh, to join him uh, just on the left-hand side. Pino is towards the front, but it's Visconti from uh, the Europe car rider Cyril Gaultier. Again, some riders just noticed that one of the blue NetApp Enduro riders is towards uh, the back of this uh, main group. I can only think that would be uh, Paul Voss, who rode well in uh, Milano Torino earlier on. But this man here is uh, tried to uh, to win this race today. 27 seconds now, all over. We are on this final climb. It tops off with about 10 kilometres to go, then a tricky descent. But he'll look around and uh, he'll see a group of about almost 30 riders behind him. Pulls out his uh, earphones, doesn't want to hear any more from the director of Sport Teeth behind him. And in the meantime, it's time to go to work for BMC. Yes, On the pedals as well is Ivan Basso. Just in front of him is Shahel. On the left-hand side, we have Nairo Quintana for well, Movistar. Well, I said don't discount Gilbert today. OK, he's been dropped in distance in the uh, Thormano and uh, Gisalo, but Van Avermaet has now come towards the front and uh, they want to control things. And I tell you what, Gilbert is one of these riders that... that if he can get over this climb within a shout, then he is a very, you know, he'll be very good bet for the finish. But again, it's hard to see past their uh, Movistar now. Um, but uh, Van Avermaet has been surpassed by one of the uh, riders from AG2R now. As more riders get dropped, Visconti's now been dropped. Again, a lot of riders looking at each other. No attack yet. Still a long way to go. Dan Martin in the left-hand side in the blue come towards the front. So interesting times here as we get towards the 11 kilometre to go, Mark. On our way up to Villa Vergano, it is almost over for Thomas Vauclair. Whatever you're doing, drop it, salute the man. He's provided the afternoon's entertainment as he does for many a day during the cycling season. Today is the last day of the big races. He knows it's done. 
he knows been knowing it was done for the last uh, couple of kilometers or so and i think he will gracefully now Poss accept his fate possible is back now in this group Sherelle is uh, leading i just noticed that betancourt is uh, being dropped at the back for ag2r so possible is definitely there Sherelle leads for ag2r the mondial and uh, just at the behind them you've got quintana and valverde the rider in uh, the team netup in dura colors is in, in fact uh, baros huzarski the rider who rode um, tremendously well with barton in the world championship so as we pick out the riders towards the front of this main route Sherelle leads from quintana valverde dan martin up there with basso on the left hand side in the green Micah sitting in fifth wacken rodriguez is sitting behind him in the uh, Katusha colours of red and white. Possevivo, Thibaut Pinot, and then I think it's a Gaspar Otto. So a lot of the uh, climbing talent now moving up towards the front of this peloton. Emanuele Sella is there as well. Gilbert and uh, Van Avermaet just drifting back. Argos rider there, by the way, is the number two or three, Tom Dumoulin, a promising Dutch rider. So Euskaltel Euskadi in one of their final appearances. Gorka Verdugo is their final representative. I think Bern Hermans is the only representative from uh, Radio Shack. So again, Sherelle leading from Quintana, Valverde, Dan Martin and Basso, Maika, Van Avermaet, Peter Seri also up towards the front. Darwin Atapuma from uh, Colombia in there. It is his compatriot, though, that's doing a heck of a lot of work on the front. Robert Hissink in the left-hand side for Belkin in the uh, kind of apple, green and black. Pinot moves up in the left-hand side also for Francais de, Genou, uh, Francais de Genou in the blue. So uh, Quintana takes it up. Pinot just to his left, to his right is uh, Basso. Just behind him is uh, Gilbert. And here goes Thibaut Pinot. Off on the pedals, attempting to try and get away. He's chased down quickly by Betancourt. We're coming into the hardest part of the climb now. We have just over a kilometre to go to the top. Possevivo is the rider in second place. Betancourt has, has been dropped. So um, Possevivo was the, the rider that reacted the uh, quickest there. So Pinot just goes on the attack. You can see Possevivo go and chase him down. And Basso still reacting very well, sitting in third place there. But again, is the two dark blue with the, the green M of Quintana and Valverde just lurking. Well, you can tell how good form Basso is in. He's up off the pedals. We rarely see that from him. Now look at Quintana go. Quintana chasing down Pozzo Vivo Basso. They're doing a great job so far. Valverde now comes close towards the front as well. He's still got the arm warmers on for Movistar. I tell you what, Rodriguez is sitting about 15th, 16th place at the moment. It's Danny Marino. It's up towards the front for Katusha. So Possevivo at the front. Basso now losing uh, the uh, losing ground. And then you've got Quintana moves to the side. But uh, you just see up towards the front now as uh, on the wheel of Valverde is Perito Rodriguez. Just behind him, you've got Mike and Dan and Martin. Great to see Omega Pharma quick step up there, Peter Sare. But it uh, looks as if T Thibaut Pinot is uh, starting to struggle. Pots of evil as Basso loses a bit of contact. Coming past him is the Irishman Dan Martin just in front is Valverde with uh, Joaquim Rodriguez just in front of that. Just over half a kilometre to go until they're designed to top this climb according to the route book. This is where it gets harder. You just see Quintana hanging on. He's already made good efforts today. In fact, just as I say that, he is now dropped. Tom de Moulin on the right-hand side dropped. Philip Gilbert now dropped Santa Marita. So the uh, composition of the group in front, Possevivo at the front for in the brown shorts for AG2R. Perito Rodriguez in the uh, Katusha colours of red and white. Behind Movistar have got Valverde. Dan Martin in the blue, but it's uh, Wacken Rodriguez. It decides what he did last year when he went on to one, and that's why he wears number one one on his back, deciding to put the pressure on as Rafa Maikas tries to respond. Joaquim Rodriguez Oliver of Spain and Catalonia off through the centre of the crowds, taking off again and looking absolutely wonderful. On to the maximum 15% gradient now and very, very close to the top. Not many are able to follow. The only man who attempted to do so was Pozzo Vivo. Well, this is what he did last year in the thunderstorms, and only Micah, uh, Valverde, Dan, Martin, Possevivo, and Basso now left. So five riders are chasing this man down. Number one from last year, we did say that uh, this is normally one and twos from Bettini, Cunigo, Gilbert, 
could it be another double up for this man in front, Joaquin Rodriguez? So very close to going to the top as we see Gilbert fighting at the back with uh, Santa Romita. The Basque flag flies uh, proudly, as does the support for the Portuguese nation as well. They'll be disappointed that Rui Costa was uh, designated as domestique rather than main man today. Here is Burrito. Irish fans cheering for him as well, but they'll be even louder in a minute when Dan Martin comes round the corner. It is so tight up here. Of course, a course designed to have everybody in single file and really struggling after over 230 kilometres. No, amazing scenes here at the, uh, the end of the uh, Tour of Lombardy. I think everybody at home probably wishing Pedro Rodriguez along here after his disappointment in the World Championships. The World Champion Rui Costa was uh, dropped to the bottom of this climb. The former World Champion there, Philip Gilbert, struggling now. But as we move back to the riders that are chasing Pedro Rodriguez and it's Valverde, Dan Martin and uh, Possavivo is just behind. So a great ride here by uh, Dan Martin, the rider in the blue. Valverde is a rider in uh, second place. Possavivo looks as if he's been dropped. And it's uh, Rafael Maika, a great outsider here. I think he was about 100 to 1 uh, before uh, overnight. So you can just see as we pan out now where Joaquin Rodriguez is. He's already on the descent, but he's got three very good riders behind him. And uh, will Valverde chase him down? and uh, help Dan Martin and Rafa Maika to try and win Lombardi, or can Rodriguez stay away for the last nine kilometres and do the double? Greg Van Avermaet at the back. This is the chasing group then of Valverde, Martin, and, of course, uh, just behind him, it looks to be Pozzo Vivo. Joaquim Rodriguez became the first Spanish winner of this race in its history, amazingly. It took 106 editions for one of the great cycling nations on earth to win this race. Despite all the climbing talent they've had down the years, Joaquim Rodriguez Oliveira was the first Spaniard to win this 12 months ago, and at the minute he looks set to try and do the same again. But is it going to be his national nemesis, Alejandro Valverde, to lead the chase to chase him down? This could be a very, very interesting fight to the fish, and I think using the word fight is very much allowed in these circumstances. Yeah, uh, there's no friends when you get to this uh, level of uh, bike racing, especially in a, a monument like uh, Tour of uh, Lombardy. You see one of the cars uh, trying to get past the uh, Europe car rider, but this is where he went, Rodriguez on the right-hand side. It was Possevivo set in the way, but Possevivo didn't, wasn't able to react, and the three riders behind Mike on the right-hand side Movistar's Valverde and Dan Martin from Garmin Sharp are the three riders trying to chase Rodriguez down and it seems to be Valverde is uh, the rider more interested in chasing on the descent. I cannot see that Rodriguez has got much more than 10-15 seconds at this moment. They're chasing. Where is Joaquin Rodriguez? A look up the road, round the next bend. In fact, round the next couple of bends. It's still not nailed on, though, and Joaquim must pedal for his dear life. Well, he was in this place uh, last week in the World Championships, but uh, Rui Costa is now gone. But, uh, again, Joaquin Rodriguez in the best place. It really depends on Micah and Dan Martin. If, uh, Dan Martin. if they help Valverde, then three riders have to, in the last seven uh, kilometres, have to ride together to bring this man back, because this is a man that's on form. Hard to see past Rodriguez when we come into this race, but, again, will the three riders of Martin, Micah and Valverde combine together to bring this Spanish rider back? A rider from Spain, from Catalonia. Joaquim Rodriguez Oliver. Eight seconds is his solitary lead. Oh dear, is it enough? That's the question. It is so, so difficult to point out. For those behind, it's all about finishing now. In the meantime, these three are interested. Valverde seemingly more than the rest. Dan Martin still in with a chance. And of course, if he gets to some sort of fast finish, Valverde has to be the favourite, surely. Yeah, Dan Martin can sprint as well. After 242 kilometres, you can just see the uh, neutral service car uh, pull over to the side to take up position behind the three chases. Valverde has distanced Dan Martin in some of the corners, um, so I don't think Dan Martin is wanting to take too many risks. It's deja vu with 5.8 kilometres to go. You and I sat in the commentary box 12 months ago and talked over Joaquim Rodriguez riding down these very roads in the wet, in the rain, with reduced visibility. 
to his first victory on the Giro di Lombardia, his country's first victory. Today he has 11 seconds on compatriot Alejandro Valverde, who leads a three-man chase group just behind. 11 seconds at the last count, but it can change at the drop of a hat. Uh, Lustig's been slightly extended now, and again, three riders not really kind of combining well. Difficult to uh, to work in a descent like this, probably better in front where Perito Rodriguez is, but again, it's uh, the rider from a Movistar just distancing uh, Dan Martin and uh, Rafael Maica behind. So, uh, Valverde doing all the chasing at the uh, front, and uh, Dan Martin just following for this moment in time. I remember, just like he was 12 months ago, plenty of people pointing out that he will be the world's number one cyclist for a second year in a row, and again, by winning this race. That's just to add to the sense of deja vu. Whatever happens, it has been another epic battle, a wonderful race, and one that is about to reach its conclusion. In the meantime, desperately trying to get on again for BMC, and gaining a little bit of ground is Philippe Gilbert alongside uh, Greg van Avermaet. I think he's further down. He's coming up to Landa of uh, Uscatel Uscadi and Tom de Moulin. Uh, they are a wee bit further back to, from the front of the race, but definitely Rodriguez has got an open road in front of him. But Movistar just distancing uh, Dan Martin and Mike and possibly the crash in the World Championships. Maybe Dan Martin losing a wee bit of confidence. He's looking behind to see if Mike is still with him. So the two riders in the middle of our, or the bottom of the screen, Mike up for Saxo Tinkoff just at the back of Dan Martin. A bit of a distance now up towards the uh, Movistar rider, and that is uh, Valverde. But in front of them, by about 10, 15 seconds, is uh, Joaquin Rodriguez. Movistar combining last week two victory at the World Championships. Not a good thing in everybody's eyes, certainly in the eyes of Portugal. Not necessarily in the eyes of their host nation, their base nation, Spain front of the race with uh, Purito Rodriguez. Still on the descent into Leco. Not too much of the final part of the race is actually flat. Of course, uh, the cliff's really dropping straight into the centre in this part of the world. The finish right by the lake. He'll know the twists, he'll know the turns. It's the same route in. Not that he saw much of it last year, not that any of us saw much of it last year with the weather. Yeah, it's pretty much, uh, pretty much all flat now on the, the run-in. And uh, as we said last week, Joaquin Rodriguez, this man with the number one in his back after winning this race last year in the same position he was in the World Championships last week. But uh, fortunately for him, Ray Costa is not the man chasing him behind. It's his um, countryman, Valverde, is slightly distanced Dan Martin, the Irish rider for Garmin Sharp, and uh, Rafael Maika for uh, Saxo Tinkoff. So uh, Valverde trying to chase him down. 2.2 kilometres to go. I don't think Valverde has got the legs to cross this gap on his own. For me, it looks as if Joaquin Rodriguez is going to double up here, and uh, Valverde will soon be looking behind him to see if Dan Martin and Rafael Maika can help him to bring this man back. But with two kilometres to go, I think it's all over. Joaquin Rodriguez will have been targeting this one just as he was targeting last week. Great defence of the title, perhaps about to be carried through. They win this one in twos, remember? Philippe Gilbert a few years back as well. All the talk of uh, Damiano Cornego as well during the last part uh, of the last decade. Inside the final two kilometres, and his lead at the last count was around 12 seconds. As we're panning out now, you can just see this uh, gap slightly opened up to maybe 15, 20 seconds. And again, the two riders at the back of Valverde, Dan Martin and Micah, trying to combine together. If they were able to go with this man here, Valverde, then they might have stood a chance. But uh, it's man against man now inside the last one and a half kilometres. And it's the two Spanish riders at front in the red and the white you've got Joaquin Rodriguez and the dark blue colours of Valverde behind it does look as if he's going to double up here you can just see the kilometre to go in front of him and uh, he'll be happy to see this after uh, 241 kilometres and it looks as if Joaquin Rodriguez is going to double up in Lombardy well he doesn't have to bother asking the cameraman to hold on to his glasses this year that was a bizarre incident last year when he should have just thrown them away into the last kilometre anyway for Joaquin Rodriguez Oliver the number one on the race, and he's going to be the number one on the day again. Turns right, going to go over the bridge, along by the lakeside, and ready to sign off another season as the top cyclist on the planet in terms of the UCI point system.
the Katusha rider who started the season thinking that he might have to have a transfer to a World Tour team as an emergency option to ride the world's best race. All that was negotiated, and here he is, ready to lap up the applause again as he's 500 metres to go, and all ready to confirm himself as the winner, the number two winner in two years for Spain. Big, deep breath, just wants to stay up right now because he knows there's nobody near him behind. One more right turn, and then it is that final run into the centre. Again, he looks round. Perhaps this is the moment where it hits him. The Lombardy region flags fly as Joaquim Rodriguez Oliver flies himself into first position. He celebrates a win, and it might not have happened for him last week, but the tears turn to celebration. Joaquim Rodriguez Oliver winning for the second year in a row. He is our winner of the Giro di Lombardia. Alejandro Valverde, again a protagonist in that uh, tearful show last week, is going to come across in second place. And in the sprint for third, well, something Rafa happened. Maica. Something happened to Dan Martin in that corner. Looks as if he's uh, he's come off oh, yeah, again. It's a chain. Yeah, he's uh, looking to try and stay on. You just see shorts are down, so it looks as if uh, Dan Martin has actually crashed in the, the last couple of corners. Gaspar Otto is coming at him, and can Dan Martin keep on for uh, fourth place? In fact, he does. He takes fourth place just Oof. in front of uh, Gaspar Otto there. As we see, uh, the uh, main group being led by Danny Moreno coming in. Peter Siri, a good ride by him in the left-hand side for Amiga Farmer quick step. Great rides by everybody to finish this. Oh, oh dear. That's the... Uh, the, uh, That's paint. the sponsor, isn't it? Yeah, the paint, the pink paint in the uh, centre of the road. He just hit his brakes there and uh, comes down with the paint and the uh, road there. But uh, another great win for Perito Rodriguez in the Tour of Lombardy. Out the way, and we do hope the rider who came down there is OK. I think it was Possevivo, uh, the uh, AG2R rider, but just touched his uh, front brake as we hit that paint. We've seen this happen before. In fact, my thinking goes back to a worse incident a few years ago at Skelderpreis in, the Nether, in the Belgium, pardon me. Uh, an awful crash after the finish line. Thankfully, everything looks to be OK. Everything's certainly fine in his world. Joaquin Rodriguez Oliver, seven days ago, down the road in Tuscany in Florence, crying his eyes out, couldn't believe that, uh, let's say, a traitor, as he's been labelled in certainly some quarters, had betrayed him, but today he did it all for himself. Great work from Katusha to control things at the important moments. This was the result. Spain hadn't won till last year. Finally, they have two wins from two, and Joaquim Rodriguez of Spain and Catalonia, the number one cyclist in the world. And almost a carbon copy victory. Yep, uh, this time it's just uh, a bit of drizzle, no uh, thunderstorms. Um, just trying to work out what the, uh, his uh, winning celebration was all about when he looked behind. But uh, Valverde coming up for a, a very good second place here for Movistar. Rafa Maika, a very impressive third place here for Saks of Tinkoff. Does look as if it's a photo finish for fourth and fifth uh, between Dan Martin and Gaspar Otto. Well, they were strong when it mattered. Not too much left in the legs as they're being shaken across. We're all ready and we're hoping to hear from Joaquin Rodriguez in just a moment's time. Amazing victory, He's with Dan two Lloyd. times in a row. You must be very pleased today. Oh, sinceramente espectacular. Otra... Yeah, sincerely, absolutely brilliant. Spectacular. Oh, we know it's a monument. And of course, uh, I've been informed recently, so we knew we were going to go for it. And of course, pushing with great force on that last climb, and I did it. Well, sure, but sweet from uh, Joaquim Rodriguez. Nice that he could understand the question, but we were going to get an answer in Spanish. 17 seconds, uh, his margin of victory over Alejandro Valverde. Rafa Maica confirmed us third, 23 seconds back from uh, Rodriguez. And of course, the view on Leco. Here's the crash here. With uh, hazing. Now, this is the nasty moment behind. Just as he goes past the Gazzetta dello Sport's own sponsor. Brake supply and a real mess.
Brian, the winning attack again. Yeah, impressive, really impressive. Possevivo was the, uh, the rider that lit it up on this uh, final climb and just where he went last year, really on the steep part, put the power down and this is what he does best. And he uh, looks behind, nobody in sight and uh, another one. We did say that uh, over the last kind of eight years, a lot of riders double up in this race. Tour of Beijing is coming up next week on Eurosport. Cotton and Magnus will be with you for that. Friday the 11th, Central European time at a quarter to nine in the morning. If you're watching in the UK, Ireland, Portugal, Canary Islands, remember that's an hour earlier at a quarter to eight in the morning. Rodrigo is the winner today. The end of another superb season in uh, European and world cycling. Rodrigo is the top man in the world. Thanks for joining us again on Eurosport this year. Brian and I'll see you next season. Look after yourselves. Keep pedaling. Goodbye.